So um, number 11 is very similar to the one that we just did. It's not rotating in the beginning and it's pivoting in a different place, uh, that sort of thing. But the idea is that this rod here uh, had been suspended and then it was just released. And so it was able to rotate uh, down at will. And our job is to figure out what's happening at the axle O and what is the angular acceleration of the rod, okay? So I want to work this one, putting the pivot in the natural place. The last one, number nine that I did, I put the pivot, well, I didn't put the pivot, but we, we worked, we summed our moments around the center of mass, but this time we're gonna sum the moments around that point of rotation. So let's set up our coordinate system. And let's say that, oops, let's say the tangential is up here. So here's OT and ON is going to be this direction here. We've got another center of mass down here where our weight acts, MG, and this distance is 0.15 just like before. Okay, so like we've done before, let's go ahead and calculate the moment of inertia of our object. Um, the mass, they tell us, is 15. And we're going to put our moment of inertia about the, the axle there. And so the center of mass is displaced. So we've got a term for that, md squared plus the geometry term for the object, which is 1 12th M L squared. Okay, so we put some numbers in on that thing. We got 15 on to 0.15 squared plus, I'm running out of room here, 1 12th on to 15 on to 0.9 squared. And, um, Got a little bit crampy there, um, but when you work all of that out, you get that the moment of inertia there is 1.35, okay? Now let's get to, uh, go ahead and use our equation and we're gonna set it up. We're gonna actually do it about the pivot point there. And so as we look at that, our force OT doesn't give us a moment. The force ON doesn't give us a moment. MG is going to give us a moment that will be positive. So I've got MG.9 we got the weight uh, acting out there. Um, it's not at 0.9. I'm sorry about that. My my dogs are barking. It threw me off. The, the moment arm for the weight is only 0.15. So it's pretty small. And it is positive. Okay. And so then I've got I0 onto my alpha. So then alpha is going to become 0.15 mg over... I zero. Okay. So I'm looking at 0.15 times 15 times 9.81 over my moment of inertia, which was 1.35. Put all that in and alpha becomes 16.35. And that'd be radians per second squared, okay? So that's pretty good, all right? Um, we're supposed to find alpha, OT, and ON. We got alpha. We didn't get anything about OT or ON there, but that's okay. We're, we're making some progress here. Let's move up to our equation with summing the normal forces. So the only normal force we've got is ON. So that's M 
omega squared r. And again, r is the distance from the point of pivot to the center of mass. But what's omega in this point? Oh, well, it's at rest. Omega is zero. So therefore, O n is equal to zero. So there's nothing happening horizontally with our axle. It doesn't have to do anything at all. It's only going to have to do something vertically. But the question is, how much vertical is it going to have to do? Is it going to be just equal to mg? Well, I mean, that doesn't really make sense because the center of mass is actually going to translate down. So mg and ot can't be balanced out, all right? Well, that's is what our final equation does for us with our uh, tangents, the tangent forces. So we've got uh, mg down, ot up, and that has to be m alpha r. So now we got to figure out, is it plus or is it minus? So let's go back over to our drawing. Okay. And we have said that this is plus for translation, uh, but we are expecting it's going to accelerate this way, which is, oh, also plus. Okay, so that's cool. We can choose plus and everything's good. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just do a little bit of algebra here. Um, I double check my signs. Okay, I do have to make a correction, um, and I'll I'll explain it in just a second here. But but we don't actually want a positive sign in there. We're going to actually need it to be negative. Okay, here's here's why, and here's where I screwed up earlier. Okay. This is a this is a positive sense okay of the of the angular acceleration the problem is my actual center of mass is going to be moving this way that's the direction of my acceleration so that's negative okay um, according to a t according to the tangential direction that's negative okay and so i I goofed up on that one. Oops. So we just got to leave that as a minus sign in there. Now we can go ahead, um, take a look at this thing. So we've got mg minus m alpha r. Okay. Now let's pause here for just a second. Suppose that we didn't have any angular acceleration. Okay, if there were no angular acceleration, OT would simply be mg. And that would all make that would all make sense. Okay. So what we see here is that OT is gonna have to be less than the weight by some amount, and that amount is the depends on the acceleration. Okay. So oops. So we get OT is our 15 times 9.81 minus 15 times our alpha, which is 1635. And our radius is still 0.15 like that. And we're going to get 110.3. OK. All right, so number nine and number 10, I, I worked it with summing the moments in different places just so you could see how they're going to work. And um, in some cases, it might be algebraically simpler one way. Um, sometimes it's not going to make any difference. Um, usually you don't know until you head down that road and you go, oh, crap, well, that didn't work. Um, or you're like, yes, okay. <laughs> 